So I woke up this morning and even though I ate a lot of desserts last night, I was really craving some of my birthday cake that I had left over. That is what I'm eating for breakfast. I actually already had a little bite of yogurt with banana and peanut butter, but I saw this in the fridge and I was like, I have to, it just looks so good. I'm gonna eat this for breakfast and just wanted to remind you that this holidays, you know, don't let your fear of eating weight or thinking that sugar is bad for you hold you back from having small moments in life that make you happy. Like the old me would have never been able to wake up in the morning and have leftover birthday cake. One, two, three, fuck it. to my youtube channel today i wanted to film a q a video to celebrate just how far i've come in taking the biggest steps in fighting my eating disorder now that it is 2021 i've reflected a lot on this past year and i just feel so amazed with how far i've come in my change of mindset and everything so i am sectioning it off in different categories you will see them on the side here <laughs> so if you want to skip ahead i will include the timestamps down below and and you can just click to a section that you want to see. If not, you can just watch the entire video. That would be cool too. The laptop here. How did you get the courage to start recovery and tell people that you had a problem? I've been pretty open about my issues with food to my close friends and my family. I think what really motivated me recently was just seeing that there was a lot of positive feedback on TikTok and girls saying that I've helped them a lot in their issues with food. So that just really motivated me to continue making videos and continue talking about what I've gone through because if it can help even just one girl go to bed at night knowing she's not alone. Also, the first post I had ever posted was about me bloating. Like it was like Instagram versus reality. You can see it here. I got a lot of positive feedback from that one video where a lot of girls were like, this just made me feel so much better, feel more comfortable in my body. And honestly, it was kind of shocking to me how prevalent eating disorders were in young women and it just made me more eager to fight it because I think it's a big issue and if I can make a difference in small ways, then that's all that matters. Do you have any tips for being scared of weight gain? So my biggest tip, or at least what helped me, was educating myself on the science behind, I guess, like women's bodies. So what I mean by that is I used to have this idea that my body had to look perfect all the time. And it kind of relates back to like Instagram versus reality. I thought, you know, I had to be like totally flat all the time. And I think once I started realizing like, it's so normal to bloat, it's so normal to be retaining water, it made me less scared of weight gain because weight is such an inaccurate measurement of your health. BMI, for example, can be so misleading because someone who is overweight could actually have more muscle, like a bodybuilder. Muscle and fat, when you take the same weight of muscle and fat, muscle actually takes up less space than fat does. So you can gain weight, but actually gain muscle. I think this idea that weight is bad or weight is scary is really misleading. As a woman, my body weight will fluctuate day to day, week to week, month to month. The biggest thing and the best thing that has helped me is realizing that everything is temporary. In your recovery, did you gain weight then start exercising or did you exercise while gaining weight? So my recovery has been an experience for the past three plus years. I did continue exercising, but I used to do a lot more cardio. I was focusing on burning off calories. I think what really helped me and what really shifted my mindset is actually doing strength workouts instead, like weightlifting and just focusing on muscle growth. I started gaining muscle and therefore needed more food in order to just like fuel my body. So I think that's what really helped me. That's just my personal experience. Like I know a lot of people will take a break entirely and just like relax and feel comfortable in their body. And that's an amazing experience too. Did you ever lose your period? And if so, how did you get it back? 
So short answer, I had to gain weight. <laughs> if you've gained weight and you still haven't gotten your period, or regardless, I think you should talk to your gynecologist because that could be an underlying issue. I had lost my period for about two and a half years. Um, it only came back once I started the pill and my gynecologist had actually told me I was underweight and had like too much either testosterone or too much estrogen, I don't remember. Yeah, and then once I gained weight in, uh, once I turned like 18 and in college, um, it just came back naturally, so. First question is, do you have any recommendations to start becoming healthier for the new year and how to stay with it? The best tip I can give is finding small lifestyle changes that work for you. So for example, when it comes to nutrition, if you love a certain type of food like pizza, you can still eat pizza, just serve yourself a little less and on the side have salad or a side of vegetables. Or you can also try making your own versions of your favorite foods with more natural ingredients. The same thing goes with dessert. I personally have a huge sweet tooth. I actually section off a meal of my day as dessert. And I think this has helped me really plan out my desserts and make more nutritious choices. But also I don't feel any guilt. It's like a meal that I can enjoy. At the same time, if I want a cookie, if I want a brownie, I'll have it. How do you make nutritious choices without falling into eating disorder habits? This is definitely a hard one to put into words because I believe there's a fine line between wanting to be more nutritious and healthier and restricting yourself because that eating disorder voice is telling you that something is bad or that you can't have it or that it's unhealthy. For me, what it goes back to is intuitive eating. I really try to listen to my body and listen to my cravings. And also I try to pay attention to how my body feels after I eat something. So for example, some days, having ice cream or having a cookie or a brownie will make me feel so calm and satisfied afterwards. Other days, is a chocolate croissant or is a big chocolate cookie gonna make me feel good or would something else make me feel better? Like a piece of just plain dark chocolate or some fruit. Like I, I try to never restrict myself. I never tell myself you can't have it. I tell myself, what would my body prefer? Another thing that has helped a lot in this entire process, I feel like I can like have these fitness goals now and not put any emphasis on food because my worth is not attached to how my body looks. By taking away that attachment of what I eat equals my body or my worth, I just feel so much happier and so much more motivated. Any recommendations for a sweet treat alternative for brownies? And then what are some good alternatives to when you crave those unhealthy but oh so delicious desserts? <laughs> so I should actually try making like healthier brownies cause that sounds delicious. I don't wanna say like healthier as in normal brownies are bad, but when it comes to alternatives for dessert, like what I have for dessert every day, because as I mentioned before, like I have a sweet tooth. So now I section off like, okay, I'm gonna have dessert every single day. But anyways, a great alternative is dark chocolate, yogurt with fruit, like dark chocolate melted with strawberries or fruit. The Trader Joe's dark chocolate covered bananas are really good. You can make nice cream with bananas and you can like flavor it with like, you know, chocolate or like Oreos or anything. Also, another thing is sometimes it's totally healthy and even better to just straight up honor that craving. There was like a really great graphic for it and I'm gonna post it here. It's not mine, but I'll credit the creator. And it's this idea of when you're avoiding a craving, you end up eating more than you planned on. So sometimes the best thing you can do is just to straight up eat what you want because then you don't try to satisfy it in other ways. How do you intuitively eat and what are your go-to snacks when you're hungry before a meal and don't want to spoil? How I intuitively eat is I really just listen to what my body is telling me and I also listen to my cravings. There are certain times where like in the middle of the day, I'll just be craving something really sweet, like an Oreo. And the best thing I've done for myself is like, whenever I'm just craving it, I just have it because it in the end reduces 
the threat of a binge or like the threat of restriction. Some of my go-to snacks for when I'm like feeling a little peckish, but I have like dinner an hour or two later, I'll snack on either veggies like cucumber, carrots. If I want something salty and like more hearty, I'll do like, I love the Trader Joe's pretzel slims are really tasty. And also I used to sh like shit on these because they're very like ED aesthetic, but rice cakes with peanut butter and banana are actually really satisfying. <laughs> Don't replace your meals with straight up rice cakes. That's not a good idea, but having like a rice cake as a snack is delicious. Um, another thing too is like to have more higher protein, the caramel rice cake with yogurt on top and even some like berries or crushed like jam on top. Oh, it's so good. Do you have any tips for feeling bad for having rest days or not re exercising every day? I still occasionally feel that guilt and I actually have to remind myself that it's really good for your body to recover. It's good to take days off so that your muscles can regenerate and I think it's also good for your mindset to mentally regather yourself. I personally find that I can push myself harder if I take breaks because then on the days that I do work out, I just feel a lot more motivated. I have a lot more energy. Honestly, like some weeks I only work out three times, maybe even two times a week. If you're new to working out, like you shouldn't be working out every day in my opinion. I think it's about making like those small changes. And also a workout does not have to be an hour long for it to be effective. Like you can have a really awesome workout in the span of 20 minutes. How do I start strength 20? <laughs> How do I start strength training if I don't have any heavy weights? One thing Nico has suggested is using water bottles or something just like heavy to add that weight. What? Backpack full of books. You can do a backpack full of books. You can also do a lot of strength workouts that don't require any weight. Um, a lot of it has to do with time under tension. Mind, remind yourself of your worth when you see a bad picture of yourself or body. So this is a really hard one and I think I still occasionally struggle with that. I really have to remove my worth with my body. How I do this is I remind myself that my body will look different day to day. No body looks perfect 24 seven. And there's actually a great Instagram you can look at called Beauty False that shows how a lot of influencers looked when they're relaxed and totally unposed. I have to take away this comparison of myself to other women. I switch any negative thought and try to think something positive instead. Oh, I look so happy here. Or, oh, that was a great day. How did you deal with that guilty feeling after you ate an unhealthy meal? Oh, that was hard. In the beginning, I would eat my fear foods with my boyfriend or with friends or with family and seeing them do it very comfortably made me feel a lot more reassured. How I dealt with the guilt was I had to remind myself just like a list of thoughts and I can write them out here, but some of them include like off the top of my head. I deserve to be happy. One meal is not gonna make or break, you know, what my body looks like. What my body looks like doesn't matter and shouldn't matter anyways. Nothing is unhealthy in a balanced lifestyle. Like everything can fit in moderation. Do you ever get anxious eating in front of people? I only get anxious now eating in front of people if they point out how much more I'm eating. I think that's just inappropriate and just kind of rude. It also just makes me feel uncomfortable. Like I've come so far, but it does bring me back to that feeling of, oh, like I, am I eating too much? Like, do I eat too much? Like, should I eat less? I don't know. So just, don't ever comment on other people's eating. It's just unnecessary. What foods make you feel good? Foods that make me feel good from a nutrition perspective um, is salmon, sweet potato, like arugula and like salad and uh, sushi. But when it comes to more comfort foods, I love like a good hot pot kind of soup, like a very like ramen or, oh my God. And not like instant ramen, like, traditional Japanese ramen, so good. Sometimes a good hearty pasta. Don't hate on me for this, but I actually don't really like pizza that much. 
it's like not something I would go for. I'd rather go for like a burger or pasta, but those are some foods that I like. How long did it take for you to get into the shape that you are in now? So it's taken me honestly probably about almost a year. I will say in quarantine, you know, I kind of went like off and on. I think once I started focusing more on strength training and weight training, I really started to see a difference in just how lean I looked. Like it was honestly kind of shocking. Also, as I started gaining muscle, I would feel a lot hungrier and I would end up eating more. I felt more confident in my body because I actually ended up looking that like lean muscular look. Do you track your food in recovery? No, I did not track my food in recovery. And that was a big part of recovering is I needed to let go of the numbers and let go of this idea that I had to eat a certain amount to stay skinny. Once I started realizing that with strength training, my body needed more food in order to sustain my growing muscles. I became better educated on what my caloric needs were, what my total daily energy expenditure was. And I posted a video on like six things I did that helped me get stronger and leaner over quarantine, so you can watch that. Advice to aspiring models and is there any form of modeling for girls who aren't size zero but not plus size? So I think the modeling industry is shifting to be more inclusive. I do know that there are agencies who take girls of all sizes, um, all heights, all body types, and that's amazing. I'm really looking forward for the fashion industry to change. And then for advice for aspiring models, if you are looking to sign with an agency, think of it as you are interviewing them as much as they are interviewing you. or. You know, they're looking at you to be a potential model. You are looking at them to be your agent. So don't go with someone who makes you feel uncomfortable, someone who's rude to you. Um, definitely do some research on the agencies in your area. Did you experience extreme hunger and how did you handle it? So yeah, in recovery, I experienced extreme hunger like i would remember literally eating as much as my boyfriend if not even more because i was like so hungry i think it was because for the first time my body was suddenly getting enough food i know a lot of people experience extreme hunger and recovery so it's not something to fear um but yes i did do you think you can recover on your own why or why not i think you can I would say though, it really helps to have a support system like friends, a boyfriend, family. I didn't have a therapist that I talked to about all my issues, um, but I definitely think my friends and my family were almost in a sense my therapy. What would you change about your modeling experience? The only thing I would change is honestly, I wish I could go back and just better educate myself on nutrition and fitness. like. I feel like I would have been able to maintain a good relationship with myself and my body from a young age until now. Did you ever have trouble with over-exercising? I did. I used to try to like burn off my food by doing excess cardio. Not a good idea. Did not work out well. Um, I feel like I ended up gaining weight in that period, which was counterintuitive just because of like the binging restricting with like exercising. Ugh, it was weird. What was it like modeling in Japan? Japan was amazing. Like Tokyo is such an awesome city. The positive side was food, amazing. I love sushi. <laughs> um, I got to experience the culture and just like explore the city. I also got to go to Kyoto for a job. So that was really awesome. I got to meet a lot of people and just, it was really fun. Like made awesome friends went out at night clubbing, even though I was underage, but it's fine. <laughs> um, but in terms of like modeling, whenever I got a job, I felt great on top of the world. Whenever I didn't get a job or like would go to castings, I'd feel very down on myself. Partly because when you go to castings, like they would line us up like cows, like literally like cattle and like would look at us like mm, you, you, yes, you, you know, which is like, just how it is like the industry but also like that's kind of damaging to your self-esteem as like a 17 year old i was like oh my god they didn't want me like i'm ugly like or like oh i'm not skinny enough and it's like so much emphasis of my self-worth was on whether or not i got jobs but 
I'm past that now. I was just very young and impressionable. My lighting is getting very dark because the sun is going down, so. Number one tip for a better relationship with food. The best thing I had to do was to stop viewing food as good and bad and instead nutritious versus less nutritious. Thank you so much for watching. If I didn't get to your question or if you have a question that I didn't respond to, please leave it in the comments below and I will get to it as soon as I can. I can also make a second Q&A video in the future if you have anything that I haven't talked about. So yeah.